Okay, y'all, how are you? Um, this is me. I haven't done one of these, one of these, you know, gosh, since I lived in Minnesota, I think. Well, wow. I have some information for you guys. Well, the whole concept of what happened, you know, with that person that I knew in the past, I mean, they wrote another thing on my YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, and basically made their threat again and said, you know, um, you guys are a danger to the transgender community, so your lives are now in danger. Consider this a warning. And I was like, as if. I mean, I don't know why they think that they can just bully people, but it's not going to work because, I mean, it's just not going to work. We're not going to, we're not going to tolerate people, you know, trying to bully us to tell us to, you know, to shut up basically, you know, for speaking out about this community that is absolutely out of its mind. I mean, seriously, when, you know, you have, you have the, the pedophiles actually trying to make their way into the LGBT, you've got yourself a problem. You know, I mean, this is, this is going way too far. We need to really understand that this is not going to end well, you know. So if you're an L, if you're a G, if you're a B, if you're a T, Q, Q, I, or whatever, please understand that, you know, condoning the actions of other people is just not a good idea, you know, just not a good idea. So anyway, this person, you know, I knew them in the past. They... Um, they were a friend of mine um, back early when I first did this lunacy, which is impossible to train, to literally think that you can become the opposite sex. It's just not possible, right? But um, when I was believing in it and I was subscribing to it and I was saying everything that everyone in the trans community wanted me to say, you know, I... Um, I had lots of friends, and a lot of those friends were very much for the whole trans, you know, concept and stuff. So I obviously, you know, they would watch my videos. They would say, oh, we love you, Lena. You're such a wonderful person. We just think you're just a, a great example, and we're just so happy to be your friend. And then when I just started saying anything, that wasn't what they wanted to hear. That's when things really kind of like unravel for me, you know. So in 2015, after my accident, I'm sitting there in a hospital recovering, right? And I'm thinking to myself, um, I don't think I'll ever be a woman. I mean, I don't think that's going to be something that I'm going to physically be able to do in this current incarnation of me. Of course, I do believe that all of us have the opportunity to incarnate into a female or a male, depending on where we are in our incarnation, right? But um, in this particular life that I've been given, I was given this life in a male body. Now, expressing gender is another story completely and i think that society you know should allow for people to express themselves as they choose to express themselves if they ex choose to express themselves more masculinely then you know that's cool if they choose to express themselves more femininely that's cool too so um but this thought that one who was born one gender, one sex, 
could actually become the other. Like, I don't know, by miraculous um, intervention or something, or a, surgic, a surgeon's knife or scalpel. I'm sorry. And I don't want to make it like a trigger point for trans people, but it is simply not possible. It's just not, it's just not something that's feasible because, you know, I know some of you don't want to accept it, but it is what it is, you know. Mark, as much as he wants to be a male or wanted to or whatever that people would think that he would have, he is always going to have a female body, you know. I, no matter how much I wanted, and I did, I did, I, I'll admit it. Um, I wanted to be a female, okay. Um, I can't. I'm over it, you know, I'm over it. I don't have to live with that angst and think, oh my gosh, why, you know. I don't need to because it's it's something that I can't attain, you know. Now, saying that, you know, we can live our lives as we feel comfortable as long as we're not taking someone else's place and taking someone else's identity, you know, from them. So, for instance, I won't ever be saying, trans women are women it's not going to happen you know because i know that they're not trans people are trans people right um they should be given every right and opportunity to be themselves and stuff as long as they don't take away the rights of other people and you know i just wanted to say that i feel very much um, honored to be able to support real women, you know, and to lift them up and to give them that place, right? That place of like, of prominence that they deserve because we live in this world where it has become very much masculinized and the role of women and their contribution to society and everything has absolutely been erased and like brought to nothing almost, you know? It's like, you know, when you think of the stories and stuff in the past, I mean, there's usually like, there's women in there. There really is, you know? The story of say Adam and Eve was really about Lilith you know, and if you guys were to look into the story of Lilith, you would understand that it wasn't like Adam and his girlfriends. It was, it was actually, you know, a woman who was birthed, who, who was birthed by the divine essence, the divine feminine, and became a living being and actually, you know, didn't want the, the male who was created to be her helper because, you know, the divine feminine knew that this being needed help, you know, needed assistance, needed someone to, to, to carry things and to do things and to help them, you know, with what they were designed to do, which was to create life and to carry on the divine mother's intentions of making beautiful things, you know. And we know that beautiful things come from the feminine essence. They are the only ones who are given the womb to carry life and to be able to bring life into this world and be an extension of that, which is that divine essence of creation. And um, so instead of like telling her story, this became the story of 
Adam dot 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 and oh by the way Adam's wife the mother of all living Eve and it's like no no that's not that's not what it was about it was about a female and her her story it's like even the word his story is, is like that that right there tells you everything everything is his story right and it's wrong because it's her story this earth is a living womb of life you know they call her gaia you know the essence of the female is in all living things the essence of the feminine is in all living things and so this constant like burying of the female principle the feminine principle you know is is really is really a travesty and when when my friend our friend starla started talking about you know how she was speaking from that place of, of pain you know that place of trauma that place of of, of of violation you know that you know it was it was amazing to hear her heart because it's like i felt i felt like the heart of the goddess you know really speaking you know and it was like i don't know i don't know it just really moved me and i felt very connected to understanding what she was describing and she did it so eloquently i don't know if you guys have the time to watch but this this beautiful woman who was just telling just just telling it like it is you know and not mincing any words and being very descriptive and feeling it and owning it as only a woman can was like amazing and i just sat there you know in awe seriously and i know that i married a person who is just like starla i mean if mark hadn't have done all the transitioning stuff and which you know there are things that you know there are drawbacks to what happened and everything but mark and i honestly we would never have met had we not done what we did you know so i'm just you know everything happens for a reason everything that took place you know is for our purpose and we accept that purpose you know because we did this so that we could grow you know a lot of people do things for reasons that aren't beneficial you know and i think that for mark and i you know for whatever reason we we rode down this 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 path you know of thinking we could change our gender and um a lot of people are going to say oh you guys are so regretful you know if it didn't work out for you then you know maybe you guys you know it, it wasn't for you and it's like sometimes i wonder who they think they're talking to because mark actually had two three surgeries in one day I mean, if there isn't someone who is not classified as being more trans than anybody, that would be Mark Angelo Cummings, who underwent a full-on hysterectomy, oophorectomy, double mastectomy, liposuction. I mean, you name it, he did it in one day, you know. And you know, usually you just you do a double mastectomy, right? You just do that. That's painful enough. 
no, 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 no. Mark's like, I am off to the races. I want to get this done. Get it out of me. I am not, you know, a woman. I'm a man. Blah, blah, blah. Had all that surgery done. Was in pain. Mom, his mom was crying in, in the hospital thinking, what are you doing? What is my daughter doing? And sister was like freaking out, got sick. <clears throat> no, no, we, we did this because we believed that sex change was literally possible. And we did this because we bought into this lie. So if anyone is going to discount our experience, if the evidence points to the opposite, you know, um, because we, I mean, well, just, yeah, it just, it just is, right? So um, we are absolutely, you know, we have the platform to speak because, you know, I'm 48, he's 54. Between us, you know, like almost 25 years of transitioning, you know, and we did what we did because we believed it. And now we do what we do because we believe it. We believe that transitioning children is absolutely wrong and dangerous and giving them hormones, you know, there's, there's doctors that are wanting to give these kids hormones at the year, at like eight years of age. I mean, if that's not crazy, I don't know what is. You know, you don't go pumping children with some kind of drug, you know, just because you think or they think that they should have been born a girl or a boy or whatever, right? You just don't do that. It's not, it's not something that sane people do. And, you know, parents want to, like, be all like, oh, but I don't want my child to, to, like, feel bad about themselves. And it's like, you know, you're not, you're not making the child feel bad. It's not that. It's, you're, you're damaging your child. Your child will no longer be able to develop as a human being. I mean, this is absolutely wrong. So we speak. We speak because it is our heart to see humanity heal and not continue to destroy itself because that's what's happening. Mankind, womankind, humankind is destroying itself and you know we as responsible human beings need to speak up and say what we need to say you know and um if people want to threaten us over that if people want to threaten us because we say that children shouldn't transition that you know doing these crazy surgeries. I mean, my friend recently from Minnesota had a massive surgery in October of this year. And she is not the same person. I mean, not. Had, I think, 15 surgeries, 10 in five days. They were preparing. Um, they were asking her, where do you want us to send you in your body bag? You know, I mean got a massive infection from a surger, surgery that she should never have bothered to do, you know? I mean, I don't think it's responsible to open up your body for anything. I mean, I know I did it for my tracheal, you know, um, but it only compromises the body, you know? It only causes this this ease you know that's when your body is not at ease it's diseased 
So huh, what we do to ourselves, you know, and a lot of times we do these things because we don't like ourselves as we are. We don't appreciate the beautiful being that we were made to be. And we feel like we have to change it. We feel like we have to like somehow turn it into something else or um, reconfigure it or defeminize it or demasculinize it. And um, if we only would understand that this body that we have is an illusion. You know, it's not real. It's not what we actually have. You know, we're spirit beings. And this life that we live, you know, is very fleeting. And age happens, people change, and wrinkles come. And we need to be able to cope with that, to understand that and to embrace it and to move forward with it instead of like kicking and screaming and complaining and thinking about yesterday and wishing that we were 20 again or that we would have, you know, a lot of people as transgender people, they live vicariously through these children, you know, and it's really, really sad. Because, you know, these kids, they think that by doing what they're doing and doing it earlier than the older people did, that they're helping themselves. And, yeah, okay, um, so Johnny doesn't develop an Adam's apple. So he doesn't develop facial hair or whatnot. But Johnny also doesn't develop a front cerebral cortex. He doesn't develop his platelets in his bones to prepare him for life as he gets older. You know, he doesn't, his brain doesn't get to develop as it should. So what ends up happening is these kids are like, they, they, they never grow into their adulthood. Now is that, is that responsible to do that to human beings? So we don't know the story that's going to be written by Jazz Jennings or Nicole Maines. You know, we don't know. We don't know the story that's going to be written because these kids have literally been used by the medical industrial complex and those who want to push this agenda along. They've, they've used them. And these kids are, are at risk. Hey, Suze, how are you? I saw you on, on our uh, live show with Derek. That was so cool. I just, and, and did you hear the comments that they're making about your appearance on Real Talk with the Cummings the other day, you impacted a lot of people, girl. It was awesome. It was really awesome. Because um, telling your story, really, we've gotten emails from people, and, you know, they want to talk about their NDE experience. Because if I think that if you get an opportunity to be able to share that experience and to experience it for one that that is a unique and special privilege that you've been given and it will impact anyone you tell it to you know because that concept of like being so like big you know and part of the all you know is something that we don't comprehend because we see our lives in this little whatever, this little five sense antenna feeling thing we call our body. And when we realize that 
you know, we are more than just, you know, flesh and bones. It changes you. It really does. So thank you so much for being on our show and for being a moderator in our group and everything. It's so amazing. And I'm looking forward to, uh, we have a, a friend, Renee, um, who's also going to be sharing her story about her NTE experience. And she has a crazy story to share. Um, she gave me some details about it, but wow. You know, everybody has a different experience. I mean, for me, I had an ND experience that was confirmed through a friend here on YouTube who said, oh, no, Mona, you did die at the bottom of the mountain. You know, when, when your car rolled over and you fell asleep, quote, unquote, down at the bottom of the mountain, people don't just fall asleep, you know. And I, I do remember it was just a very warm, comforting sense of just like you um, don't have to struggle. This is the sense I got. You don't have to struggle. Just rest. And when the light shows up, your help will come. So... I did. I, I don't even remember how peaceful of uh, rest I got seemingly that night when I was down the bottom of that mountain. And it changes you. It really does. Because it's like I, I left this portal to existence of parallel universe kind of thing happen where I left where I was and like touched another dimension, you know, and I still feel like I touched that dimension. And every day that I, that I experience more awakening and more truths and everything, I feel like I'm so like not connected to where, where I'm at, you know, like, yeah, I'm here in Silver City. Yeah, we rent we rent a house and you know, we wake up and and eat and go to sleep, but I don't know. It just feels different. It feels different, you know. So it's like interacting with people feels different these days compared to how I used to feel back in 2014. Um Yeah, it's it's really it's really crazy, you know. Because what you think is real is not. And what and what's and what is not real to, that they say is not real is real. So Derek was saying that this planet is upside down. Like the north is the south pole, south is the north pole, and we live in this inverted reality. And when you think about it, um, what I understand, like, I'm a photographer, and I remember when I was looking through my camera, the image that it takes is actually upside down. So, like, when I would look inside my camera, I could see the image, but it was, like, upside down. And from what I understand is that our eyes, when we look and we get the image initially it's like upside down and then our brain straightens it out you know it's so everything everything about this construct is is inverted you know it's it's totally like not what's real and that was something that, you know, I was, I was thinking about when we were doing our show and just the whole concept of this earth not even being our original home and that this planet 
you know, that we live on is not really the, the place that we're from, you know, that, you know, we were kind of like, you know, like we died or something, and then our souls were collected, and then we were transplanted into this new planet, you know, which is a fragment of the original one. So everything that we think is real, everything we can perceive with our senses is contained within this matrix. All living beings, all nature, all heavenly bodies, all microscopic bodies, everything. So when you look up into the sky, you're only seeing a copy of what really exists. And, you know, they do this because they want to keep us manipulated. And they use our belief systems. They um, use sound to create a barrier so that we can't get out. You know, Derek was talking about how he was going to be interviewing David Icke, and they were going to talk about the whole thing of Saturn and the frequencies that Saturn emits and all that. It's going to be really fascinating. I guess it's on the 17th of this month, um, but most of humanity, just like that movie, the, the, um, the Bird Box, most of humanity is wearing blindfolds, and it's like they're sitting in a dark room, and they're trapped in this reality, and the only reason we believe we're trapped, that we are trapped, is because we, we believe we are. We believe that this is all there is, and there is nothing else. You know, we were talking, Mark and I were talking to a guy on Facebook or YouTube or something. He's like, he's an atheist. And he says, you know, you guys believe in all this God stuff. I mean, and this divine, divine being, this divine essence and all that. That's just a bunch of bunk. We're just going to, you know, we live, we die, we go to the dust. We, you know, there's nothing. But it's not true because... Science is proving it, quantum physics is proving it, that there's another existence that exists outside of this grid system, you know. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's this barrier, and it keeps us from perceiving and experiencing what's true, the, the real universe, you know. Because while we're here in these bodies, living on this planet, having this quote-unquote real life, there's a barrier and it exists. It's, it's in us and it's, it's a conscious level. It's a barrier that keeps us from perceiving our reality and it's true expression. And it's because of these belief systems, the traumas we've experienced. I mean, everyone's internal grid and barrier is individual to that person according to their own experiences. So we begin to tear down or dismantle these barriers in our own internal grid when we quote unquote wake up and we begin to realize that this reality right here is not what we've been told or what we're led to believe. And it can happen on a real microscopic level, such as personal religious beliefs. I mean, I was a I was like, I believed in what I had been taught, you know? I mean, I thought Jesus died on the cross, the whole story of salvation, you know, the whole manger scene, the whole innocent baby, the whole crucified thing. I believed that, you know? And, you know, when you realize that those belief systems are part of the system of control, it's like, you know, when we go and silence our inner critic and we choose, you know, and those precious individual experiences that we endure and, you know, even those things that are supposedly negative are actually positive for us, you know, to grow. I mean, the accident on the mountain for me was monumental for me to, to understand the reality of where I'm at and who I am, you know, that accident actually opened my eyes to accepting the fact that I would never be a woman, you know, that, you know, prior to that, I literally thought that it was possible. 
So these supernatural experiences, all these synchronicities, when all these things start happening to us, and we often call it like we're piercing the veil or tapping into those experiences and perceptions that aren't usually available to us in our day-to-day -day lives, that's that inner grid. It's, it's like a like this metaphorical blindfold. So if we look at the grid as just that, and we just see it as a veil, the Bible says we see things through a glass as if in a glass darkly or dimly or something, but we will know later and be revealed the truth or something like that, right? So the Bible always does reveal certain truths, but there's a purpose for it revealing those truths. It's so that we can be connected to the God that it promotes. You know, in this case, Jesus is pointing us to this father figure that is going to rescue us and deliver us from ourselves and from evil, right? So if we understand that the veil is what is what we're dealing with, so just like we have our own barrier within us that keeps us from, you know, understanding things, not only on this earth, but on the entire universe that we perceive, that's the thing, the perception. The perception is the lie, the five senses that we have, the, the touch, the feel, the touch, the see, the hear, the taste, the, what, you know, all those, all those things, right? That is just a perception. So although we can't physically see this barrier that we're, uh, surrounds us, we can't see it because it surrounds us, right? So it exists in this, like, a non-physical form, right? It's like people say, oh, you can't see the, you can't see the air, but the air exists because you can feel the wind, right? So it's, it's only perceivable in that time-space construct that we call the afterlife after we shed all of our physical limitations. So it's like when people take an ayahuasca trip or you know, they, they do some mushrooms or whatever and they go on a trip, it like opens them up to seeing things that are the true existing elements of our existence, you know? So, you know, people go on a trip and they see really crazy things, you know, and they see through people, they see the energy of people. I mean, our friend Suze yesterday said that we see, um, like she saw waves, sound waves, and that everything was like connected to itself. So it was like, whoa, stuff that we don't see. Right? So it's like this barrier of beliefs that we have and this consciousness that's, you know, at this collective human level. And we agree to all these beliefs and perceptions. Christianity has like three billion followers, you know? So it's this collective belief system that everybody like is all into and it makes it this reality for people. So the thing is, we create it, you know? It's like we do this to ourselves. So we don't, we don't just, you know, like do this on our own. It's like this collective thing. And it's this um, frequency that surrounds us, right? Like we're surrounded by Wi-Fi now. And then in about, you know, probably the next few months, we're gonna be surrounded by another type of like unseen energy called 5G. And I don't know if you guys know what 5G is, but you know, Wi-Fi is, it works on a level of like microwave radiation frequency that, you know, that affects us physically, but we can't see it obviously. But 5G is more sinister because 5G is radio wave frequency, and that can do more damage to the physical body. And it can actually 
shut down our physical body in ways that microwave energy frequency can because that's what we are we're electric right we're 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 um, electric beings so um it's it's crazy you know the 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 depth of what is happening to us you know so we believe that this is all there is because you know we think that you know we we can that we don't know anything else you know those who have an nde experience those who experience things that you know like blow their minds and then they come back like you know and they they're like whoa it's not it's not like i thought you know so we experience these things and we think it's real to us so our belief systems are built on this collective reality and we we keep it all trapped in this room and we 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 just keep thinking that this is all there is and that's all that you know our overlords and people that are in control of our destinies or that are trying to control our destinies want us to know because they don't they don't want us to know that we are divine beings and that we're sovereign and that we have the ability to do amazing things you know jesus himself said why do you marvel at what i do you know you too can do things like this and even greater right uh, the kingdom of god is within you right and that whole concept is that you know we don't we don't have to be afraid of our own divine consciousness you know everyone is free to make their own choices about their own lives but Finally, in this day and age, people are finally taking off their blindfolds and they're seeing the walls of the room, right? This earth, this contained, this container that we're all kind of like terrarium that we're all kept in, like pets in some, some like, you know, some aquarium or something, peered through holes that they've created, realizing that they are in fact we're in, in some kind of containment and that a whole new and different existence lies beyond the walls of the room, right? So some people want to go out and explore. Other people just want to stay in the room. So no matter how much you want to tell people, hey, this isn't all there is. This isn't it. This isn't what we got going. They just like, no, I like it here. I like the system. I like my things. I like my toys. I like my house. I like everything about this existence. So they just want to fix the walls, maybe add some paint to it, put a new piece of furniture here or there. And they say that the room is just fine because they like it here. And like I said, some are still stumbling around the dark wearing their blindfolds. Just like that, just like that movie, right? The bird box. They just want to be left alone in the corner of the room where they're comfortable and it won't trip over any of the they won't trip over any of the new furniture or experience any of the changes that these other crazy people are talking about. People that they say, Oh, you guys are conspiracy. You guys believe in Luciferianism. You guys don't believe in the message of Jesus. It's like it's like they, they're asking, what's wrong with keeping things just the way they are, right? But what those people who are tearing the holes in the wall eventually discover is that soon they'll need to make a choice to keep tearing down the walls or just be content to leave through one of the holes that are large enough to slip through, you know, because if they keep tearing down walls eventually, there won't be any more walls and there's not going to be any more room. The room's only made, you know, into existence by its walls. So you keep tearing at it. So this is true for our, you know, the frequency fence that we have, you know, around this earth. And um, if we remove that, although it's a great thought, you know, it's like, oh, we could just tear it down and then create a new heaven on earth, you know, well, that would just destroy the reality as we experience it because this isn't our reality. This is someone else's reality imposed on us 
you know, Earth only exists within the containment of the frequency of, of, of this frequency that we have. And if we were to take it apart on our own, we would like, it's basically Earth as we know it would be no more. So the, the, the key is that everything that we can perceive with our senses, you know, everything, is, is contained within this matrix and everything that we have is, is only, it's because it's been manipulated and, you know, we've been taught that this is what we have to work with. So I just think there is so much more, you know, there is so much more that we don't understand, you know, about our existence. But it'll take a lifetime to figure it out. But these days, since the veil is opening and the grid is like shredding, we're seeing these things and we're being exposed to them at a quicker rate. So I think it's an exciting time. I really do. And I'm, ex I'm so thrilled that I get to live in this in this time period, no matter what happens, no matter what takes place in the future, it's going to be amazing. Because in the end, I don't die. I know that. I know that I don't die. I know that I live on because I know that I'm an eternal being of light. And eternal beings of light cannot be destroyed. So if you consider yourself an eternal being of light, you won't be destroyed either, you know, no matter what people are saying, you know, no matter what, if there's a third temple or if, you know, the ascension is happening or people are worried about the rapture or the fall of modern society and the, the devaluing of the dollar, I mean, none of that matters because we don't really exist in this plane we're eternal beings of light anyway i rambled on and um thanks for hanging out with me i don't know why i did it just did it felt like saying something but you guys have a great night and we'll see you another time make sure to check us out on um on YouTube, we have our our Real Talk with the Coming show that we do mostly every, what is it? Um, it's like every, we do it every day just about. We're not going to do it tomorrow, but we do it every every day, and we have different topics. We have different people who pop in. I mean, today's show with Derek Bros was mind-blowing, and, um, you know, we have... John Keem joining us from the Best Down Podcast. Um, but, you know, I mean, we're hoping to get Jeffrey Doherty on our show. Um, you know, we're we're dreaming big. Maybe we could get David Iker or somebody like um, um, David Wilcock or something. It'd be cool. Or maybe Thoth. Who knows? Maybe we'll have Thoth come on, you know, and talk talk to us. Or maybe Jesus himself. How about that, you know? I don't know. There's lots of possibility when even the sky is not the limit. So you guys have a great night, and thanks again, and we'll see you. Bye.